This is the Barbecue Central Show podcast being generated from a live recording of the Barbecue Central Show, which airs at thebbqcentralshow.com every Tuesday between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices. Visit them at thebbqguru.com or call them 800 800- 288-GURU. And by Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply. Sauces, rubs, grills, smokers, everything for the outdoor chef. Visit them online at tastylicksbbq.com or call them 800-677-2882. And by Butcher Barbecue. Manufacturers of premium injections, rubs, and sauces. Visit them online and take full advantage at butcherbbq.com. And by Stephen DeFranco Jeweler. Official jeweler of the Barbecue Central Show. Visit them at stephendefranco.com or call 440-943-2700 and use keyword Barbecue Brother to receive all the discounts. And by iGrill, manufacturer of Bluetooth-enabled temperature, which is generated and sent to your smart device. You can find out more information by visiting iGrillInc.com. Use promo code CENTRAL to get 15% off your entire order at the iGrill Inc. store. And by Green Mountain Grills, one of the country's premier pellet grill manufacturers. Three different sizes to choose from, something to fit in every budget, and find out more by visiting GreenMountainGrills.com. And by Cook Shack, the country's premier manufacturer of electronic and pellet-driven cookers, servicing the residential, commercial, and competition markets. Visit CookShack.com for more information. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure you say whatever? We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. The show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening if you would like to jump in on the show tonight. More than happy to have you where I can fit you in. It's a number to call, 216-220-0966. It is also an email address to send emails to Greg, 1G, Greg, G-R-E-G, at thebbqcentralshow.com. Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And uh, here's what's happening tonight, in case you didn't get the lo- uh, the newsletter, in case you didn't get the newsletter. Let me chase you over to the uh, Barbecue Central Show website where you can you know, find a, a whole bunch of uh, different things happening. I got to uh, affect my gain here, just for a second. There we go. A little too bright. If you uh, hit up the main website over the eh, around the top right area, you will find the thing that says newsletter. Sign up, put your email address in. I don't sell them yet. Someday I might for large sums of money. And in return, just for signing up for the newsletter, which uh, typically, except today, is delivered around 4 or 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday to give you a little heads up on who's on the show, uh, you will also get in... A form of my thanks to you, my ultra-secret barbecue sauce recipe. Just for signing up. It's my gift to you. So uh, that's what you want to do. So in case you didn't get it, A, head on over to thebbqcentralshow.com to sign up right now. And listen to who we have on the show tonight. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now. Somebody we've never had on the show. Two people we've never had on this show. One, perhaps a more than cursory interest in barbecue. Uh, The other one, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. 
uh, Brian Quaka, Pygmy, and uh, Quita, Q-U-I-T-A, I believe is how you spell her last name. Uh, Nine fourteen, Brian Quaka, who is a pig man, and Quita will be joining me. We'll be talking about the uh, show on Discovery Channel, like the big network Discovery Channel. It's called Boss Hog. I believe it airs Friday at ten Eastern. So look forward to that. I think uh, uh, nine thirty-five. We will j- be joined by a longtime friend of the show, a very successful pitmaster, now newly crowned author, Melissa Cookston, yes, who's Delta Q and part owner of uh, Memphis Barbecue. And then we'll move into the second hour where another accomplished pitmaster will be joining us, the creator of a succulent product, many succulent products, and a uh, guy we've had on the show a couple times, Craig Sherry of Texas Pepper Jelly joins me. Love talking to Craig, big Texas guy. And 1035 coming out of the proverbial Barbecue Central show, Bullpen he is the most recent Sam's Club local qualifying winner uh, out of the Denver, Colorado location this past weekend. And I believe he'll be turning right around along with uh, 50 other people. Mm, mm, 50? Top 6? 30 other people going to the first regional final in Las Vegas, Nevada this week. Uh, that is, of course, pitmaster of GQ, Jason Ganahl will be joining. Looking for Huge show. All right, I got to be honest. A, I hate when people say that, so I can't believe I just said that. But I think the my color is just re- bad news, son. Oh, but I don't want to go too gainy. Oh, I need like some professional work done. I think. And if I go, oh, see, I don't even have that. Ugh, I'm just gonna leave it there. Look, the Lord gave me this face. Deal with it. Get that big stuff out of here. Right now, blast off an email. Let everybody know this could be one of the most hotly reviewed shows ever on the face of the earth. I mean, for crying out loud, we got Pigman and Quita coming up in about 10 minutes. So get on the Facebook, fire up the tweeter, and let everybody know you're watching the show. A couple of different links. Uh, A, in case you didn't know, the audio stream is working to the tune of 63 people right now. Wow, that's huge. Uh, well, 63 connections, uh, we don't really know how many people that is. I usually times it by two because, you know, chances are you're listening to the show or watching the show with a friend. So take the connections times two. It's like 150 people just listening to the show uh, audibly on, uh, you know, iTunes radio, on TuneIn, on the main website. However, uh, send them to thebbqcentralshow.com if you are so inclined. If you know they like the audio stuff, you can also download the TuneIn Radio app on the phone. If you have iTunes, go to the iTunes radio portion. Go to Sports and Talk. Look at Barbecue Central Radio, and you can get it right there live as it's happening. If you're the video kind of person, go to OutdoorCookingChannel.com, our longtime uh, video syndication partner of this show for uh, any vast number of years. And, of course, as we say each and every week, if you have the Roku or you have some of those IPTV type gimmicks and the uh, outdoor cooking channel is part of the app store for your particular device download the outdoor cooking channel app on your iptv and you have a live stream option there which you can catch the show live uh, right on glorious high definition perhaps we shouldn't use glorious but right on a big screen high definition if you have one in your house or little you know whatever whatever works for you whatever you got and you can get full contents there. Of course, you can subscribe to iTunes for replays audibly of the show. You can also visit my uh, barbecue uh, YouTube channel, which you'll see here on the lower third. Outdoor Cooking Channel obviously has video replays. And then, you know, the mecca of any audio replay or video replay is the show website itself, the bbqcentralshow.com. All right. Uh, once again, just uh, recalling last week, got the shave down. It is not a summer dew. It was a long vested plan of a hair attack. I am not the guy that is going to be trying to keep whatever he has at any and all costs. I don't care about that. Uh, Dave in Kansas emails, probably one of the best emails in recent memory, and I'm going to need everybody's help on this because I figure why not even maybe make a page that is dedicated to this. Dave in Kansas emails, Greg, sometimes you mention rules of the show. For those of you listening audibly, I just did air quotes. For those that are watching on the video, you just saw me do air quotes. What are these rules of the show you mention every so often? I would like to make sure that I am following the rules of the show. 
It's like a guide for life, I think. So let's quickly make up a list. Uh, people in the chat room, if I forget one, please weigh in and let me know if I have forgotten a rule of the show. Of course, we know first and foremost rule number one. No names, please. No names, please. That is a rule that you should really think long and hard about using in your everyday life. Everyday life. You know, don't be a tattletale. Hey, I talk to top men in the industry. No names, please. We don't want to get anybody in trouble. That's rule number one. Rule number two of the show. Of course, don't get hooked. Don't get hooked. You got a friend, you got a neighbor, you got a coworker that likes to bait people, draws people in. Now you're in an exchange. Perhaps you're in a physical altercation. Perhaps somebody's been trying to draw you out on the Facebook or on the Twitter. Don't get hooked. Don't resort to any type of tomfoolery or hijinks. Forget about it. Don't get hooked. Rule number three of the show, which could be rule 1B. If it's free, it's me. I'm writing these down so I can put these on the page. If it's free, it's me. Self-explanatory. If you're going to give me something for free, I'll take it. As a matter of fact, I'll take two. Hey! Uh, I believe those are the three steadfast rules of the show currently. If I have forgotten anything, we can add rules number four through infinity. And then we can uh, perhaps once a quarter revisit the rules and decide if they are holding true to four. Good enough. Those are your rules of the show. Make note. All right, Centralites, are you interested in taking barbecue or smoked foods to the next level? Have you thought about starting a catering business, opening a food truck, or even your own restaurant? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, let Cook Shack help you be successful. Register for Cook Shack's Fast Eddie's restaurant and catering class to be held in July. This class will be held at the Country Club in Ponca City, Oklahoma. It uses their commercial kitchen. You'll see how to cook on a Cook Shack charbroiler. FEC 500, FEC 120, and an SM 160. All smokers used during the class will be available for purchase at a special rate. For participants at the class, now, the class has classroom portion and a hands-on portion. If you want to handle meat, rubs, and knives, this is a class for you. Each student will learn how to select proper meat cuts, how to trim brisket, how to trim pork butt, ribs, chicken, all that stuff. Other topics that will be discussed include menu ideas, cook and hold techniques, food safety, brining, profitability and yields. It also includes setup of a dinner service and serving the patrons of the country club. Class is taught by legendary barbecue cook, none other than Fast Eddie Marin himself, barbecue pitmasters, TV show finalist David Bosco Butcher's Barbecue, and Cook Shack CEO President Stuart Powell. Each student will receive a binder with class materials and supplies and Cook Shack spices and sauces to take home. It also includes three nights of hotel, meals, tours of Cook Shack manufacturing facility, and a tour of the Head Country barbecue manufacturing facility as well. The class dates are July 21st and 22nd. Class size is limited to 25 students. So sign up today. For more information, contact Krista with Cook Shack at 800-423-0698 or email her at c underscore jones at cookshack.com. That's c underscore jones at cookshack.com. For additional information on Cook Shack or Fast Eddie's by Cook Shack, visit cookshack.com. That's cookshack.com. Once again, that number for the Cookshack class, which will be held July 21st and July 22nd, 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. Or again, the email C underscore, not hyphen, C underscore Jones at cookshack.com. Good folks, Cookshack. Happy to have them aboard. All right. We are gearing up for Pigman and Quida. I will step away and gather my wits, make sure that they are sharp about me. And you will probably do the same thing as well. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ. Centralshow.com. We're back right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, 216-220-0966, Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. Ways to get in touch with me. Uh, John Dawson weighing in. Remps, is it just me or are there any others who think that a Sam's Club regional final in late April is apparently ridiculous? Sorry, patently. Could be apparently, I guess. Thank you, John, for weighing in. I'm sure the people taking part this weekend don't think that it is patently ridiculous. Uh, waiting for the Pigman and Quita. This portion of the Barbecue Central show, though, is brought to you by the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. 31 cities, half million in cash prizes to be won, plus eternal bragging rights if you win the whole son of a bitch. This week, the Sam's Tour rolling into Las Vegas, Nevada for the first regional final of the 2014 Barbecue Series, as John and I just talked about. 30 teams will do battle, and the top 10 teams will move on to the final round, Bentonville, Arkansas, on September 27th. That's a ways away. To keep up with the tour or to register to compete, more importantly, because there are still places that have openings, visit kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. Sam's Tour. So uh, stick around for that. Um, We do have the uh, Bentonville, Arkansas finals coming up September 27th, so, you know, like eight months away or whatever it is. But these are your first round people, so, you know, you got to get behind them, whether it's uh, late April or not. People are going to compete. They're going to try and get to that uh, top 10 spot to move on to Bentonville. And uh, there you go. All right. Uh, My first guest tonight can be seen every Friday night at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Discovery Channel on the new reality show Boss Hawk. Let's go ahead and uh, race over to the hotline and uh, welcome in Quita to the show. Quita, how are you? All right. How y'all doing uh, this doing, afternoon? Doing absolutely fabulous, Quita. I believe we're still waiting for uh, the pig man to be joining us, but we'll go ahead and start with you. Because, look, honestly, Quita, this is a barbecue show. Uh, you're obviously running a barbecue restaurant that uh, Brian is a part of. We'll, we'll figure out how that whole thing works. Uh, so you're kind of like my barbecue connection, as it were, if you can feel me. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. All right, Quita, so uh, maybe a little background about yourself, um, how you uh, get into this whole barbecue business. Is this something that uh, business-wise you grew up around or maybe something you got into a little bit later in life? Yeah, um, it was actually started by my grandfather, and we're actually in the third generation. Um, he uh, he only built the barbecue place years ago from a, you know his recipe that he fixed for my grandmother and him. Um, he only... Uh, wanted to sell the barbecue to build a church. So he, he pondered with the idea back in 1955, and then he actually started selling the barbecue um, in different places in Mahia, uh back in 1957. But he established the business in 1959 where we're located at now in Mahia. And this is, uh, it's called Wright, uh, Wright's Barbecue? Yes, sir. Yes, it's Wright's Barbecue. And uh, what city are you uh, located in exactly? In Mahia, uh, Texas, M-E-X-I-A, Texas. It just it sounds a little different than if you spell it out, but, yeah, we're located in Mahia. Got it. All right. Um, Quita joining me from the show. Quita, uh, the, the, the PR lady didn't seem to have a last name for you. Uh, what's the, Do you have a last name, or should we just call you Quita like Cher or Madonna? <laughs> no, you, you could call me uh, Quita Wright. Quita, right. Okay, well, it makes sense. I didn't want to make the assumption because you never know, I guess. Um, yeah. All right, so now third-generation barbecue. So obviously you said it was, the business was started in 55. Two years later, it actually, uh, I guess, becomes more of a, a business uh, for retail and for profit. Uh, how have you seen the, the business kind of change from, you know, all the way back in, in the late 50s? Or, or I guess, you know, as you kind of, I'm sure you're kind of a historian of how the business has grown over the years. But as you look back, uh, just kind of a, from a high level, how have you seen business change and just barbecue change in general from back when, uh, you know, it started in the mid-50s to, to where you see it now in 2014? 
Well, um, actually, I, I believe it, it has changed. I mean, of course, over the years, everything changes. But just, you know, me growing up and, and going to visit my grandfather and then later on my dad had it, it has really took a, you know, a turnaround in the way in which, you know, things are processed and, and the legal legalities of the whole thing. But I, I think in general it has went, you know, fairly well, you know, uh, being a business that's almost 59 years old, you know, that's a grown man business, you know, so I, I, I consider it as a seasoned business. And it and it has, you know, as well as I tell you that we're the third generation, we are feeding fourth and fifth generation people. So we have people that come in the barbecue place that can remember um, going to school or even uh, being around my grandparents. And, you know, they're still living, and my grandparents, uh, which deceased uh, my grandfather in 1990 and my grandmother in 1995. So it it has really changed, but I'll tell you this much, our uh, reputation and cooking and, you know, just the recipe has never changed because we're still feeding uh, people that remember when my grandfather had it, and they're still uh, holding on to that same, you know, taste, that same, um, if you would, it's just a consistent way of things we do it. You know, how we do stuff is with love. You know, that's what we've always been taught, to do everything with love and, and consider God in everything. So that's I think that's that has never changed as far as us doing business. I just think the the prosperity of the business has changed because it is growing and growing, you know, as God sees fit. So basically, I guess what you're saying, in other words, the same flavor profiles that were set out back, you know, when the business first started, things that you have actually stayed true on uh, to this day, been very little uh, evolution as far as that's concerned. Uh, yes, indeed. Wow. Uh, Quita Wright joining me here on the show. Uh, you can check her out on the show called uh, Boss Hog that is on the Discovery Channel every Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, so let's talk about the show a little bit. I mean, I've seen a few screeners. Uh, uh, Brian seems to be quite a, uh, let's say, an ebullient character on the show. And I'm wondering, as probably a lot of people are that have seen the show, how do you guys like come together uh, in a business sense, and uh, h- how was the show, I guess, uh, pitched to you as, as being a, a part of? Um, you know, in actuality, our families have really knew each other their whole life. Like I tell you, as if you go back in the generations of the Quakers and, and the Wrights, they have always been close and, and bartered and traded over the years, you know, so that has kind of kept us in touch with each other, but as far as us going into business, that was kind of awkward together, but it was great at the same time because I was like, how am I going to get along with Brian and how is he going to get along with me? But, you know, it just kind of fit in because we're used to each other, you know, just as the families go and, you know, him going to school with my brother and, you know, just often seeing, but it's amazing. It really is. It's truly amazing because, you know, you wouldn't think that it could work, but it it's possible. Anything is possible. And and it's just I get a kick out of it. You know, it's you know, we have our ups and downs on decisions and stuff like that, but we generally get it worked out. All right, Quita, I'm gonna try and join a call. I'm hoping this is uh Brian here. Brian, is that you, buddy? Oh and it dropped. All right. We're trying. I see another I see another number keep trying to call in, but for whatever reason, we're uh, I'm not able to, to get it joined up. Uh, frustrating, no doubt about it. Um, yeah. All right, so in regards to the to the show itself, there's um, I, I guess I'm kind of both horrified and fascinated with the evolution of you know what one would term uh, reality TV shows these days. You know, back in the day, it was uh, MTV's The Real World, then it's uh, Survivor, then it was Big Brother, and now there's like any number of shows on any network seeming to fill a niche or, or just kind of make one up. You know, part of me thinks that people watch these kind of shows in hopes about feeling better about their lives and then hoping that someone has it worse than they do. And then uh, they like to, like, ridicule the TV and other portions seem to watch where, you know, they think, hey, uh, maybe I would do something differently if I was in uh, that kind of a, of a situation. Uh, pulling yourself out of the show, because uh, obviously you're in it, you know, what's your take on the whole reality TV deal in general? Um. My take on reality TV is that, you know, 
no matter how you look at it and, and what angle it is, reality is reality. You know, I mean, you, you're only going to get so much out of it than what you put in. I mean, what you, what you see on TV is real. It just depends on how much of your life do you want these people in. You know, how much of, of your life are you willing to depict for America? You know, I mean, you can you can make your life all out drastic, or you can make your life just as simple as it is, or you can just keep it real and just go along with the flow. You know, it's just I I, I take reality TV. You know, I take it as you know I take it serious. You know, because it's only as serious as the person in which they're talking about. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, they give their opinions, but that's your opinion. You know, in actuality, it's only however you look at it anyway. Uh, Quita, a lot of people would sit and say that, uh, you know, what you're seeing on any show, whether it's your show, whether it's Duck Dynasty, whether it's, you know, Dangerous Catch or, or what Deadliest Catch, that, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff is uh, staged or put on. For somebody that's being in it and taking part in it pretty much on a, on a day-to-day type basis, are there uh, things that seem that are, that are pitched to you to, to – bring up or uh, take part in reality uh, shows or is it all really happening as it uh, as it would really happen whether there were camera there's or not yeah in in our show i mean we don't we don't have a script this is what i'm telling you when we do something it is real it is no way that you can play cut up a hog or play just happen to go do this you have to be able to do this and i'm not one that is really someone that is playful you know, I don't, I don't, I don't play. I may say a few jokes, but I take life serious. You know, and so whatever I have to do, you're gonna get Quita. You see what I'm saying? When you see Quita, if you ever meet Quita, you're gonna get Quita that you see on the show. That's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get Quita. I, I don't have to put on or play as well as Dap and Pigman. I mean, when he come in hot, he come in hot, whether it's a camera in his face or not. You know, when I talk to him on the phone, he's the same and Dap and as well as the other cast. I mean, we don't have anything to, you know, portray for America. This is real. This is just the average, you know, mom and pop shop and, and, and partnership that you're going to find. You know, it, it, we, we don't have to put on for America. It is what it is. Yeah, uh, this is a uh, – we're talking with Quita Wright, by the way, who uh, is uh, part of uh, Wright Barbecue and um – we're talking about the, their show, Boss Hog, which you can find Fridays on Discovery Channel, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So depending on where you are in the country, go ahead and make your uh, time zone adjustments as necessary. Is there any hope, maybe, that um, you would like to see the Quita Wright's Barbecue reality spinoff show, potentially, if uh, Boss Hog gets really popular? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> uh, several people have asked me that, and... And I will say this humbly speaking, um, if that were to happen, I mean, I wouldn't mind. But a lot of shows, you know, like I said, you will you will get the real Quita and and the real family, and and we're not controversial. You know, a lot of people will be controversial just to make a show and get ratings. We're not. We're based off of love and God, and and you know, just living today for what it is. And so, you know, I wouldn't mind because. You know, 59 years we have been going, and I'm telling you, when you come in there, it's like home, and and I know without a doubt America would want to see the real deal without, you know, a lot of fighting and bickering and doing this. I mean, they would love to just see something like a, I don't know, in, in comparison to like a cheers atmosphere or something like that. We don't have liquor or anything like that, but I'm saying it, it would be some place that everybody would want to go. You know what I'm saying? And I think it would be great, but you know, whatever, whatever turns out will be fine. I mean, we we have a show all in itself. You know, I tell people we we've, we've been famous for fifty nine years. We're just not getting on TV. <laughs> Quita right joining me here on the show. Um, do you is there or, or I guess when Discovery is talking to you guys uh, or whoever they're talking to that might be telling you, do they have benchmarks set up for this show? for them to deem if the show is, is successful enough to, A, continue on to future seasons? Uh, and would the goal be to get to an echelon of a Deadliest Catch or a Turtle Man or, or a Duck Dynasty? Is that like a, a goal or a hope for the whole crew and, and for everybody involved with the show? Um, yes, they have uh, those set up. But um, as far of course, you know, we would like to get 
ratings and stuff at a steady, you know, pace and basis that we could keep going, you know, hopefully a second season or anything. But, you know, I feel like that our show is, is going to, you know, turn out great. And, you know, I say to any anyone, but in high expectations of it going on to be uh, one of America's uh, most watched reality shows, I would hope that um, – and not to try to compare with any of the other shows. I just think, you know, as far as us standing on our own and Boss Hall being for what it is, I, I believe that we can make it and not have to jug or anything at any of the other reality shows. I think we could just make it being who we are and doing what we do. And and I think it has a lifespan and expectancy in it. As someone who probably never had cameras in their face 24-7, flip that on its head you got cameras in your face 24 7 what kind of an adjustment was that like for you and is that something that a have you become accustomed to it now or is there still type of a or is there still a an adjustment time that you're going through no um one thing about quita and that's me um of course i don't (laughs) need a camera you know i'm gonna be me is when the cameras are in my face i literally don't see them because this is what you're gonna get and I can stand in front of audiences, and I've been like this all my life. I could recite poems and stuff in front of big audiences. So that doesn't bother me. I, I talk all the time anyway, you know, and I, and I say stuff all the time before I know it anyway. So, you know, <laughs> it was no big deal. You know, I was just like, oh, well, you know, maybe they'll get a close-up. You know, I wouldn't, you know, it's still nothing for me to adjust to that. I mean, I, I literally don't even, I, I don't even get nervous or nothing. You know, it is, you know, how I am. And so you get quita. And, you know, if you're going to be nervous or, you know, you're nervous when you have something to play. I'm not doing a play. I'm not reading a script. I don't have to memorize nothing. This is quita. This is me. And that's what they get. As far as the couple more questions here, and I'll let you go. Appreciate the time tonight, Quita. Um, the, uh, should, should one construe from watching the shows that, the stuff that uh, Dap and, and Brian are taking down out in, in the wild might be something that you're uh, bringing into the shop and cooking? Um, I will tell you about that. Um, <laughs> as far as wild game, you know, of course, if, if you don't know, I'm, I'll help you to some things that, uh, you know, they have regulations on that for the federal, uh, D, I mean, what well, the FDA, of course, Federal Food Drug Administration. And um, they have uh, the federal... Um, the FDA must say it short. Um, you can you cannot actually, you know, without being processed, use wild game. So it has to be sent off and processed. But once it's sent off and processed, and this is for personal consumption, once it's sent off and processed, yes, we'll cook it for a personal consumptive person. You know, that's for them, and it has to have been sent off and come back in like three weeks. So you have to have the papers and regulations on it, and it's only what you caught. You know, like if they come and go out there and hunt, they, we can cook that for them, but after it has been processed and come deemed back with the uh, regulation paper and everything. All right, uh, Quita, have you seen any influx in business to the store since the, uh, the show has started airing, or are you pretty much seeing the, you know, the average, uh, what you would get day in and day out regardless of the show? Oh, no, actually, uh, business, it has really, you know, grew just in these matter of weeks. You know, so many different people. I have received so many different calls from different people about the show and just telling me congratulations on the show and, you know, that they're watching and, you know, they want to come hunt and this and that and the other. So I think it's great. You know, a lot of people that didn't know about us, they are learning about us now. You know, and so that I, I think that's a great thing. But it has it has picked up business, and I feel like, you know, the more we go or more we air, it will pick up even more. But we have always had a steady rate of business anyway. Uh, Quita Wright can be seen every Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the show Boss Hog on the Discovery Channel. Uh, and uh, you can uh, check her out uh, if you're down in that neck of the woods for some great barbecue as well. Quita, really appreciate the time tonight. I had some technical issues on my end. For whatever reason, I wasn't able to get Brian in, so I'll have to make that up to him. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, really appreciate you making time uh, for me tonight and continued success with the show. Thank you so much, and yeah. y'all have a blessed night. Thank you very much. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, Quita. Man, what the hell was going on with my freaking phone? I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to shut this Skype down willy-nilly, like ASAFP. 
Uh, Brian, I uh, apologize. Pig man, I'm the pig idiot. Look, you run into some technical issues here and there. These are things. This is the other thing. You know, this is a live show. It's what I always say. If something happens on the live show, you know, I, I, I can't, like, reset. Can't hit pause or, you know, I'm on the clock. Got to make adjustments on the fly. So I apologize to each and everybody. All right. We will continue to push through Melissa Cookston coming up out of the brink. Talk about her new book. Folks, let me talk to you quickly about the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control technology. Uh, if you are in the market for a tip, pit temperature control device, why look anywhere else? These are the guys that created it. If you're not familiar with how these little beauties work, I don't like to get into the minute details, but allow a product to set your or to mind your temperature that you set it at. Keeps it running at that set temperature all the way through the cook. Sounds too good to be true. It's not. It's real life. You can take advantage of this technology today. Uh, maybe you are a busy working professional or perhaps you are constantly on the run with kids and doing errands. Quite frankly, you just don't have the time to set around and tend pit temperatures. Barbecue Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs. And then you're off to do whatever it is you need to get done and the Barbecue Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. There are currently four different models to choose from, so you know there is one that will fit your budget. You have the CyberQ Wi-Fi, you have the uh, ProCom, you have the uh, CyberQ2, the DigiQ DX2, and of course that Party Q getting a facelift. We hope to have uh, Brian or Brian. We hope to have uh, Bob Trudnack on to talk about the new one. Uh, 129 bucks for most cookers, 10 bucks more for the ceramic styles because that vent at the bottom, easiest point of entry. For all pit temperature control devices, self-contained package that runs on AA batteries. Goes from cooker to cooker to cooker, boom, there you go. If you are in the market for a cooker, look for the Onyx oven. Fully insulated, holds a ton of meat, half and full pans for uh, food service and catering. Works seamlessly with any of the Barbecue Guru pit temperature control devices. Do yourself a favor, head on over to thebbqguru.com and check out their products. If you have any questions about what to order, call them directly at 800 800- 288-GURU. They'll make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. Again, that's 800-288-GURU or thebbqguru.com, the Barbecue Guru, a breakthrough in barbecue technology. All right, we're back with um, Liz Cookston right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Seven seven four four eight zero four three three to get on the air. Now here's your host, Greg Rampy. All right, we're back. Apologies to uh, Brian Quaka. Not sure exactly you know, what my uh, technical difficulty was there, but I'll get that straightened out. We'll try and reload him. Little interview with the pig man. My next guest is a successful barbecue restaurant owner, barbecue cooking class instructor from time to time, a multiple time world champion at Memphis of May, the inaugural Kingsford Invitational Championship winner, and now we can add newly published author to that list. Let's go ahead and race over the hotline. Welcome back, Pitmaster of Yazoo's Delta Q, author of Smoking in the Boys Room, and most importantly, a friend of this show, Melissa Cookston, joining me once again. Melissa, how are you? Oh, well, I've had bronchitis, so I don't have much of a voice, but I'm going to try to talk. Well, you sound in a great uh, voice tonight, so hopefully uh, that holds out here for at least for the next uh, few minutes. And uh, certainly appreciate you uh, making time for the show, as always, Melissa. Um, number of uh, different things that uh, we can talk about, but uh, the book seems to be fresh and uh, tops on the list. It's called Smokin' in the Boys' Room, so a uh, nice play on words, of course. And one of my favorite all-time rock bands. Do you like Motley Crue? 
Of course. Of course. So, when we, you know what, before we get into the book, let me brag on you just for a second. Uh, this past Saturday, I'm at a birthday party uh, for my youngest uh, friends. It's a skating party, so of course I'm not anywhere near the ice because I'll break a hip. And uh, this dad just starts uh, kind of going on and on about his most recent travel and that he was out in uh, Mississippi. And he's going on and on about this barbecue place that he ate at. And uh, I said, well, you know, what's the name of this place? He's like, I think it's like Memphis Barbecue something or other. And I said, well, you know, did you take any pictures or do you have a website? And yeah, sure enough, he shows me a bunch of these pictures that he was just raving and raving about. And then I saw the logo and I said, oh, well, you'll be happy to know that I happen to know Melissa Cookston and her partner, Jeff Wheeler. And by the way, he'll be on, or she'll be on the show on Tuesday, so you should be tuning in. Needless to say. He was very impressed with me, but more importantly than that, he is spreading the good word up in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Memphis Barbecue Company. Fantastic. You know, we try to uh, make barbecue lovers out of Yankees any day we can. Uh, Yankees. All right, so the book is out, Smoking in the Boys Room, as I said, and you can go to uh, memphisbbqco.com, grab an autograph copy, if I'm not mistaken, right now. Uh, it's on sale while we're talking. Uh, you approached, uh, did you approach... Or were you approached about writing a book, or uh, did you have an idea for a book and then go out to publishers and try to solicit directly? You know, I didn't. I thought a book might be down the road, but it, I didn't think I was ready for it. I had two different publishers contact me basically at the same time, um, probably within a week of each other. Wow. So I said, shoot, why not, you know? <laughs> are they saying, hey, Melissa, are you interested in writing a a book and it's up to you as far as subject matter and content or are they specific about a, a a recipe book because you know in all honesty if you look at you know the barbecue world or sector and especially for a lot of the the more popular people like yourself and, and successful people that seems to be kind of like you know hand and foot uh, you, you're successful you do some classes uh, you're going to get a book deal uh, were they like hey let's do another cookbook or were they a little bit more open to your interpretation of how the book would look well, I think they definitely wanted a cookbook, but, you know, they gave me free reign. Um, they knew from the beginning how many pages the book would be, so they cut some of my funny stories out, which um, upset me terribly. <laughs> uh, Melissa Cook's joining me here on the show. So this whole writing process... Um, I you know, I hate to say that I've probably read about two books in my life because I'm, I just, you know, books in me, it's like water and oil or whatever you want to call it. So for me to not be an overly huge fan of reading, you know, there's that whole other side of the thing where you actually have to write the book, which seems to me to be almost something where reading would seem to be more fun. For you... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a picture girl. I yeah. really didn't embrace the writing part of it. How does that like? How does that go for you? Is it something that you really had to uh, buckle down to, or you know, once you were into it, was a little bit more uh, free flowing than you thought it might be? I don't know. I had to make myself sit down and do it. <laughs> and like, given the other commitments that you have, like I don't know, a restaurant and you know, uh, some contests or you know, whatever you're up to, you know, how do you make that time given everything else to make book deadlines that are uh, coming up on you? Well, the one thing I learned about myself uh, writing the book is I'm pretty damn funny. <laughs> and, um, you know, midnight, I'm even funnier. So um, I wrote a lot of it in the wee hours of the morning. Is that uh, just because you, you found yourself most creative or is that's because no, you that's just only, had the most free time? That's the only time I had time to write. <laughs> so do you, do they tell you prior to like going into like press after you get it published and uh, edited or whatever? So, but you're getting ready to to get it pressed, and do they say, okay, Melissa, these are going to be some uh, benchmarks that uh, you know we, the publisher, are going to be looking at uh, to see how the book is going to be gauged if it's a success or if it's not? How is that, uh, or do they not even have that conversation with you? We never had that conversation. Um, I knew that it was a large printing um, for a first printing. Yep. It was a hard cover, so, um, you know, that's pretty impressive. A lot of come out and soft back now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they really didn't put any pressure on me. They did a fantastic job. 
it's in Walmart, Sam's, all the major bookstores. So they really pushed hard, and I think they'll let the sales take care of themselves. Have they uh, given you direct feedback saying that it has exceeded their expectation or that it is on track for you know whatever uh, whatever goals they had had internally then? I've heard zero. You, you've heard zero what? I've heard zero feedback. You're kidding. Nope. You wrote the damn book. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen at the public, Melissa wants weekly reports. Are you are you interested to hear how it's like, you know, what those numbers are, or is it not that big of a deal? You know, I want to know what the numbers are. Um, I know um, I really would hope that I could get to the whole um, – I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm... let me uh, let me uh, dump you here real quick, and then I'll call you right back. Okay. All right. I I figured there was something going on. True champion working through the uh, the echo monster, as it were. Maybe there's a Skype issue tonight. Pigman couldn't get on. Well, I'll make it up there. Okay, testing. Any uh, anything any better on that? That is that's much better. Okay. Okay. That's all right. <sighs> So about the it's numbers. It's hard enough to look at yourself in the bookstore to look at your picture, but it's really bad when you're hearing yourself <laughs> repeat itself. Don't I know it? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, where were we? So uh, we were talking about you don't get any numbers, and you were interested in seeing the numbers. Yeah, I think um, it, they give it four weeks. At four weeks, I'll get some sort of update on the numbers. But, you know... I look, there's a thing you can go on Amazon as an author and look at the numbers of books that are being sold on Amazon um, and actually where they're being sold. And I, who knew? I was big in Oregon. Um, a lot of books sold in Oregon. But the Amazon, Amazon sales are, are huge. Um, I was up to number two on um, cookbooks on Amazon, which which is fantastic. So, you know, I'm not really concerned about the numbers at this point. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, going very well anyway. Um Prior to the book going out, did they say, hey, if, if things go well, uh, we want to, or did they say, hey, we want to sign you to like multiples, or is it just like one at a time? It, or do you have a second book in you if offered? Oh, I'm sure I do because I'm funny, damn it. And they left a lot of my funny stories out. Um, like, I don't know if there have been any recipes, but I know there's more stories. How, um, how, do, they, how do they decide what is going to be, how do they decide how funny you are going to be? I mean, how dare they? I know, right? Yeah. You know, they um, they cut some of the stories down. Um, like I said, they had determined how many pages the book was going to be um, from the first conversation. So, you know, there's only so many pages that, that they could have just the narrative on there, and the rest of it had to be recipes. And, of course, you have to have good-looking pictures in cookbooks. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that the next one gets a little more narrative and a few less recipes, although – um, I've got a few good recipes that I didn't make in this book that will definitely be in the next one. Is it possible? I mean, obviously, the the whole cookbook thing is is as I'd said before, hand in hand with the barbecue culture at this point. But I mean, you've you've been around uh, the circuits for a while, and you've seen a lot of stuff. You've won a lot of stuff. Uh, you're successful in business on the restaurant side of things. Do you think that the barbecue world is ready for a uh, not a, a fiction book, but just a here's here are my me- memoirs up to date and uh, just stories of the barbecue trail. Do you think that is something that could sell? Oh shoot, I don't know. I'm not in sales really. I, I just cook. And, and the one thing I learned about writing the book is I'm not a writer. Just like on TV, I learned I'm not an actor. Um, I kind of leave that up to somebody else. You know, I think anytime we can get barbecue in the public eye, whether it be in written form on TV, um, blogs, whatever it is, that you know the barbecue community is better off. So I applaud anybody that, that tries to do anything um, as far as, as writing a fiction book, and hey, I would buy it. As far as the book itself is concerned, do you have uh, like a favorite one or two parts or, or recipes of that uh, of that book? There's a couple of uh, recipes that I think Jaws will drop when they see it. One is a pinto bean pie, which um, is a sweet dessert, and uh, it, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, it's, it's a fantastic recipe, but, but, you know, just in like pinto beans ought to be in a pie. Um, the other is grape salad, um, which is not usually a, a, a staple on the Thanksgiving table or, um, at a July 4th party, but it is fantastic. 
It, um, those are my two favorite recipes in the book. It, it does. The, I, mean, I love grapes, uh, any and all colors and sizes. Uh, is it uh, is it an evolved recipe or something fairly simple that you can whip up and have this weekend? Oh no, it's very easy, and that's one thing in the book. I didn't want anything to be intimidating. I really tried to make it as user friendly as possible, so that anybody could feel like they could tackle any of the recipes. Because I've looked at those cookbooks where it's like, oh shit, I'm not going to take all the time to do that. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so I really tried to put recipes in there that were easy to make but taste fantastic. Uh, has there been any talk of like a like a book tour or, or anything like that where they're going to jockey around the country and uh, put you up in really high palatial hotels and have you sign books for the adoring fans? You know, I'm already in the middle of that. I was in Nashville no. at Vanderbilt last weekend. Um, and, you know, what I noticed most off is the book tour is um, there was nothing in Memphis, which I thought was absolutely not smart. But um, I just found out that, that they booked one in Memphis for – May the 10th, which is when I load in at Memphis in May, so I'm sure I'll look nice and sexy for that. Well, uh, as the true professional you always are, you helped me dovetail nicely into the uh, next question, which, of course, uh, has nothing to do with book, but Memphis in May, obviously just a couple weeks away, so it sounds like you're going to be uh, giving it the old college try there in your old stomping grounds. Uh, how confident are you going into that um, multiple-time winner there, uh, I believe was it twice in a row or three times in a row or something like that? Um, how, how how are the competition chops right now, or or do you not need to really knock any rust off at this point because of the restaurant stuff? I am extremely confident that I will not do well. You're that confident? <laughs> I am that confident that I will not do well. Could could this be uh, from projections the the worst Memphis and May in in recollection or at least recent memory in the last four or five years? Um. You know, I have not cooked a competition hog since Memphis in May last year. And at that point, I had not cooked a competition hog since the Memphis in May before. Um, you know, the one thing about competition is you have to compete in order to keep your timing down. And uh, you, get, you get in a rhythm. And right now, I'm in restaurant rhythm, which is a little crazier and a little more hectic, but it's a total different style of cooking. So, you know, I have a lot of experience, and I will I – will, I will go in there with that experience, and I'll, like you said, give it the old college try, but I'm really not expecting much. Is it, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, and perhaps it's a bla walking the thin line of blasphemy, but would you ever just not consider cooking it, cooking that competition, or is that just too too much of a big one and, and too known to Yazoo's at this point to not, not cook it? Yeah, you know, if I could have gotten away with it, I wouldn't have cooked it this year. But unfortunately, I have a husband I have to answer to. <laughs> so, <laughs> he didn't want to take the year off? Um, you know, it's Memphis in May, and um, we still get a lot of publicity down there with media. Um, and, you know, it's it's good for the restaurants. You know, and who knows? Lightning might strike, and, and I might have a great day, and all the stars might align. And, you know, we might do well down there. So you just never know. Uh, obviously, from what I heard from our friend here over the, the past weekend, uh, it would seem that the restaurant is doing very well as far as, you know, being a part of the at, uh, ownership group. How are you seeing it now over the last couple of years of having been involved with it? And it looks like there's actually a, a new location that might be sprouting up here sooner or later. Yes, we're um, opening the Atlanta market in Dunwoody in June, um, and I am so excited about it. We had a, a write-up in the Atlanta paper that it was the most anticipated restaurant opening of the year. So I'll see if I can live up to the hype, and I'm sure I'll be um, – I'll age 80 more years, and I'll have more wrinkles <laughs> and gray hair. But, um, you know, I love what I do. I have the best job in the world. You know, from where you're at logistically to Atlanta, you know, I guess I don't know how close that is, but I'm sure it's not just an hour down the road. Um, do you feel like you're going to be burning it too much at, at both ends or uh, definitely a welcome challenge to, to get this thing open, running uh, right up to park? Well, you know, the second location is 16 hours away, so um, Atlanta's a breeze. Um, it's six hours away. And, um, you know, I have a lot of good people that work with me, and um, I have a lot of trust and faith in them to do the right things. And um, sometimes um, I'm finding that my OCD has to let go a little bit and um uh, you know, trust them to do their jobs because I've taught them myself. So um, they know what to do, and, and um, they're taking great care of the store in North Carolina. And I will be um, in Atlanta all summer. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
With a third store coming online, do you see continued growth for the name Memphis Barbecue Company, or are you starting to, to reach a threshold of limit here? Oh no! You know, I think I think we could open. Um, I think we could open at least one a year, if not two a year, for the next four or five years. Um, you know, I'm not getting any younger, but I got a few years left in me that I can go open these things. Um, and then I'd really like to just travel from place to place to place and say good job. Still, no uh, no thoughts of doing the whole uh, franchise type deal. You want to keep it under the thumb? Yeah, you know, I I really I don't really want to put my name on somebody else's quality standards. Um, I have a hard time letting go with that. And, you know, I will never sacrifice quality at the restaurants for a dollar. Everybody knows pork and beef prices are going through the roof right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I could get cheaper cuts, but I won't do it. And, um, you know, I'm just afraid that a franchisee might not be as committed to the quality aspect of the restaurant business as I am. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa Cookston has a new book out. It's called Smoking in the Boys' Room. You can uh, grab it at uh, memphisbbqco.com or any uh, major book retailer, any major retailer, for, for crying out loud, whether it be brick and mortar or online. Uh, you got the new uh, restaurant going up in Atlanta as well. Melissa, always appreciate the time. Thanks for going a little bit long with me tonight. And uh, continued success. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate you having me out. Yeah, you got it. There she is, Melissa Cookston of Yazoo's Delta Q, fighting through the uh, echo in the beginning. I thought it was a little strain there going on, like, Ugh. and then we found out what it was. So I got to start putting in my a brief to people that if you, once we get on the phone, if you hear a little bit of an echo, just let me know right up front. We'll hang up. We'll, we'll try it back, and boom, the rest of the interview was like butter. And I could talk to her for like an hour about business I like the no-holds-barred people. That's what I'm talking about. Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply wants you to know that they have an amazing wide selection of cookers, sauces, rubs, and all things for the backyard cook. And the serious competition team needs. They sell Big Green Eggs, Kamado Joe's, Primo's, Mac and Green Mountain Pellet Grills, all the Weber Grills and Smokers as well. Meadow Creek Smokers and Cookers, and they're one of the largest barbecue guru dealers in the country and the very first to offer professional and amateur cooking classes, featuring well-known chefs like Harry Sue, Todd Johns, Dan Hickson. The list goes on for 20 smokers, I believe, just put on a class or is about to get ready to put on a class. Uh, you call Fred Bernardo. You can call him Fred. You can call him a smoking guitar player. You call him whatever you want as long as you buy some. Anyway, call him right now or one of his friendly staff, 800 677 2882 or just got uh, just go over to your friendly internet and look them up online tastylicksbbq.com that's tastylicksbbq.com and don't forget smoking tar player has over 150 cooking videos on the website and in a couple of them said it last week doesn't even try and sell you anything he's a gas it's Tasty Lakes Barbecue Supply in beautiful, tropical, and majestical downtown Shillington, Pennsylvania, or on your friendly worldwide interwebs at tastylicksbbq.com. That's tastylicksbbq.com or 800-677-2882. All right. We are back to wrap up the first hour. We'll review a little. I have to check some email to make sure I didn't piss anybody off too much. And uh, we'll re-adjourn here in just a few. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Networks. Name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. 
Uh, thanks to Melissa Cookson for joining me this past segment talking about a new book, Smoking in the Boys' Room. You can find that at any major online retailer, any major brick-and-mortar retailer. You can find it on her website, Memphis BBQ CO, Memphis BBQ Co. Dot com. There's a little link right there on the homepage, and uh, you can link right on over to it. And if you buy it on the website, and I'm not sure if it uh, holds true with any other retailer aspect, but on the website, her website, MemphisBBQCO.com, MemphisBBQCO.com, yeah, uh, autograph cop. Autograph copies are great. You can hold it, keep it in your bag, put it in Ziploc, up on the shelf, collector's item, 20 years from now. If she's opening a store from year, uh, it would be like a, her 23rd store. You can uh, produce it. Boom. Collector's item. I'll take $75,000 for that book. Thank you. Autograph never been opened. Check the spine. Check the spine. Disconnected. What? I'm not disconnected. Am I disconnected? Hey, you people watching, am I disconnected? I'm on, right? I'm totally online. I see, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. I didn't get any alerts. Um, we're going to step away. Uh, we will talk about what happened in the first hour. In the second hour, Craig Cherry joining me, uh, as well as Jason Ganahl. Stick around, we'll be right back. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? We ate Vinci for wiener. Oh, listen, Laverne, it's shake face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Who? Top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Hello. Alan Wang, and we were disconnected for a moment, but it came back, all right? Hey, all I know is we were there. I have some status things on my respective broadcasting softwares. I did not show a disconnect, but obviously there was uh, something that happened there. So, hey. Patio Daddio. I nominate Quita for a spot in the second hour montage. When he's coming in hot, he's coming in hot. John, I agree. I'll have to go uh, isolate that, I believe is what they call it in the industry. All right. So let's uh, quickly recap what happened. So in the first hour at 914, I was supposed to have an interview with uh, Quita Wright and Brian Quaka, who's the pig man, uh, on a show called Boss Hog, which is on Discovery Channel Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I don't know exactly why the second call was not merging in, uh, but uh, halfway through the interview, I saw quick blips on the screen uh, where it looked like he was calling in, but I can't, given the, look, I'm only one person. I know, you know, look behind me. It's just vast space. You would think that perhaps I have 17 or 20 people working on the show, making things happen behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know how else to say this. Nothing can be further from the truth. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a one-man operation. And if things do not go according to plan during the live times of the show, my ability to improvise, if you will, is pretty limited. Um, I can't put somebody else on hold and you know, try to call somebody else and then hope I have the options of merging calls. 
Plus, it's my distinct belief, and I'm the host, so that's the only thing that matters, that if you are in the middle of an interview, it's tough to break the, the rapport that we're building together as guest and host to try and, at, at that point, crowbar in another interviewee. You start out with two, that's fine. Granted, this is a technical issue. This isn't somebody calling in late or not showing up or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But having done this show for a number of years now, to high success, by the way, on the worldwide internets, it just didn't feel right unless I was just able to swoop him in like I tried to do that one time. And you saw it didn't work. Unless I'm able to magically just kind of work him in without a lot of BS stuff that you can't see anyway. I mean, you don't care about any of this. Um, but my apologies, uh, A, to uh, Jackie for lining up the interview, and then uh, obviously to uh, Brian for uh, not being able to merge him in. But Quita, was, I thought, was absolutely uh, a dynamic interview, a lot of great history there, uh, having a barbecue shop open since 1955. Well, I guess originally for the church in 1955, but then 57 uh, for real business. And then having grown now into its uh, third generation of ownership through Quita, having kept the same profiles, uh, the business growing, uh, third generations of people coming to get fed. I mean, that would be really great. I mean, imagine me opening up a barbecue shop now uh, when uh, my daughter, Bobby or Madison or Marley, gets old enough, taking it over from me and then one of their kids taking it over from them. Uh, and me being able to see that before I take the good old dirt nap. Get that big stuff out of here. That'd be great. Unfortunately, I live in Cleveland. And that's not going to... A barbecue restaurant isn't going to uh, take that many generations. It's going to take about eight weeks. And then it's going to close. And, you know, then you're done. Hey, by the way, uh, this... Chain restaurant that is taking over the barbecue world. Maybe you've heard about it. Dickie's Barbecue Pit has opened in Mentor. So if you are, uh, you know, around the greater Cleveland area and you don't have a Dickies by you, I believe there was a Dickies that opened in Medina, which is not close to me or pretty much anywhere. Closer to Columbus than Cleveland. Not really. But uh, now I got one 20 minutes up the road. So now that I'm a legitimized LLC, I think I'll be taking the sexy wife over to Dickies and writing that off. Thank you. Thank you, tax man. Still to come on the show, Craig Sherry in about 10 minutes from now. Also, Jason Ganahl from GQ. On the show next week, Gabriel Garcia. Are you familiar with Gabriel Garcia? Google his name. And then whether you think he is attractive or not attractive, looks have nothing to do with it. Let me tell you what's damn sexy. The grill that he's got going. It was on Kickstarter, I believe, or you know one of those Give Me Money sites. Um, it looks similar. John Dawson kind of reminded me of it. Uh, if it's, it's a grill works or the grillery or something like that. So you're burning, you're, uh, you're burning a live fire and it's got this huge high top with the wheel that you can go up and down and you're feeding live coals into this thing. I mean, it is a very sexy piece of equipment. No doubt about it. So we're going to be talking to Gabriel about his uh, grill and his business. Then... Super Highline Grill Manufacturer, CEO of Lynx Grills, Jim Book, will be joining me to talk about the Smart Grill. This is a grill that maybe you saw making the rounds a month or two ago in a lot of the home and hearth type patio shows that you can put a steak on and say, I want to have it cooked to a medium rare temperature. And it'll tell you when to flip it. It'll tell you when you've reached a certain temperature and you take it off and everything is supposed to be cooked supremely. So we're going to be talking to Jim Book about that. Very excited. And also, we have uh, Monty Brown from Trash Can Cookers, who is the current steak cooking champion of the country, maybe the world. So we'll talk to him about steak. He's also a barbecue competitor. And we're also hoping to grab the uh, Sam's Regional winner as well. By the way, we're talking about Sam's. The 2014 Sam's Club Series rolled into Denver, Colorado this past weekend. It was the last local qualifying event for uh, teams moving on to the Las Vegas Regional which will take place this coming weekend. Uh, the top six teams moving on to this weekend's regional round are, of course, the winner, who we'll be talking to in about 30 minutes from now, uh, GQ. Sizable win, by the way, like nine points. Grillin' Beavers took reserve. Smoking Hot Butts took third place. 
Uh, Smoke and Triggers uh, still on the hunt there. Uh, took fourth. Swinestone Cowboys took fifth. And routing out the top six and moving on to Sin City, Burning Bob's Butts and Bones. That's a great name. So, uh, to all those people that will be competing this coming weekend at the first regional final 26 in Las Vegas, good luck to everybody competing. Good luck to you. Good luck to, good luck to you. And then, of course, let me make sure that we still have this one. We have... Uh-oh. See, this is what happens. You don't get to news articles... And then they expire off of whatever uh, news uh, news thing it were. It were? <sighs> Tree trimmer gets saw stuck in neck. Oh. Yeah, that's no good. That's not the link that I had, though. The link that I had was uh, women, woman threatens boyfriend with barbecue fork. Well, it's either good or bad news that I don't have it. Get that big stuff out of here. Uh, John Dawson from Patio Daddio Barbecue telling me that Dickies ain't worth a two-mile drive, let alone 20. And Jeffrey Starks agrees. Well, boys, I don't know how to say this, but you're brimming and filling me with confidence. Uh-oh. Well, I gotta go. It's not like I have a plethora of barbecue joints to choose from around here. Got to go support the local economy. That way I can do a write-up. And if it's good, I can tell people. Maybe my franchise is good. It's just like we talked about with Melissa Cookston here just a few minutes ago. You know, she doesn't want to do the franchise thing because she doesn't want to let anybody else deem the uh, quality standards. What's good and, and what is, what's acceptable and what isn't accept, uh, acceptable. She's going to continue to set those standards. That's always been the proverbial argument against the franchise you know the argument for is it's pretty brainless as long as you got the cash uh, you have like all the setup things done and and the equipment's coming in and they're going to give you all the methodology and how to train and all this stuff but you have very little control over adjustments to be made you know this you know unless you're a very committed franchise owner you know you want to hold whether it's a franchise or not you're going to treat it like it's your own and bring it to the the heights and, and lofty goals and quality levels that you would hope a regular barbecue or any restaurant any chain restaurant would have craig sherry coming up out of the break from texas pepper jelly all right gang if you're like me whoa what? What is going on here? I got to reload. I'm showing zero. What? If you're like me, folks, you got to step that barbecue and grilling game up. That's why I tell you to go to Butcher's Barbecue each and every week. ButcherBBQ.com. It's the place you need to go. Houston Livestock Barbecue Contest winners. Teams in the KCBS, FBA, IBCA use Butcher's Barbecue products. How about the fact that the pitmaster of Butcher Barbecue products uses Butcher Barbecue products? <laughs> yeah. I know, crazy concept, right? We all know Butcher's well known for the injections, the pork, the beef, the prime injection, of course, Bird Booster. Perhaps you're looking for a go to rub or sauce. Friends, you've hit the mother load here. Butcher's Barbecue, a full line of award-winning rubs. One of my personal favorites is that steak and brisket rub. Of course, everybody knows I love the honey rub. I did two racks of succulent ribs this past weekend with a large amount of honey rub. If you get that premium rub, use it, especially if you inject with Butcher's, because it's formulated to work with the injection. A perfect one-two punch to impress judges and friends alike. Last but not least... Butcher Sweet Barbecue Sauce. Look, when it comes to sauce, I'm as picky as it gets. The Butcher Sweet Sauce wins in every category for me. Not overly sweet. A nice slice of tank. Just the right amount of back end heat. For crying out loud, no liquid smoke. Dave took the time and effort to make sure that he came up with a great quality sauce. And then, and only then, he's like, I'm going to bring that bad boy to market. Okay. 
You do that, Dave Bosco. We're going to be right behind you buying that product because we love it. You can go to butcherbbq.com to buy it. Don't worry about breaking the bank on shipping either. Items totaling up to 55 bucks ship at $8.50. Between 55 and 200 ship at $9.75. Anything over $200 ships for free. Again, that's butcherbbq.com. That's butcherbbq.com. Stock up now. Get over $200 worth of stuff so you don't have to pay for the ship. And, much like I cut out a second ago, chat dead on uh, Outdoor Cooking Chase. Tune into the show and listen. It's the way it's meant to do. No chatting amongst... All right. Uh, Craig Sherry coming up right after the break. Stick around. Be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, uh, technical issues here and there. Nary, we will continue with the show. My first guest in the second hour has a truly unique and amazing product. He's also a championship pitmaster. Let's hit the hotline and welcome back the pitmaster of Texas Pepper Jelly, Craig Sherry, joining me here on the show. Craig, how are you, bud? I'm doing fine. How are you doing this evening? Doing absolutely fabulous, Craig. Appreciate you making time for the show tonight. A number of different topics that I would love to discuss with you. Uh, First and foremost, uh, I guess for the people that might not be familiar with uh, Craig Sherry, the person, the businessman, the successful Texas Pepper Jelly and other associated products entrepreneur. Uh, maybe a little history about you and, uh, yeah, I guess, how you kind of got involved, A, in barbecue, and then uh, more specific to your own products. Well, you know, we've been around eight years now, nine years. Uh, I had an interest in, in being a, my own businessman and came up with the idea to make pepper jelly. I parlayed that into... Uh, a product called Rib Candy. We recently have come out with a barbecue sauce. All this is tied into my cooking, which started about the same time, about eight years ago. And I, it's kind of like one fed the other. Um, you there, Craig? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a lot of static on my end of the phone, a lot of double talk. Sorry. All right, hold on. I'm going to dump you. I'll call you right back. All right. All right. Wow. What is going on? There must be moths in the uh, Ethernet lines. Wow. We should pack up and try it again next to you. Craig, you there, buddy? Uh, yeah, this, much better. Much better? All right, great. Um, all right, better. so uh, you were doing uh, the, the, uh, the cooking and the products kind of hand-in-hand uh, hand almost. Absolutely. I uh, figured the best way to showcase my products was to actually get out there and use them. It's hard to convince a guy to use something when you're just sitting behind a desk or on a telephone. And it's paid off big, big time. Um, you know, I've been cooking now for about nine years. I've had some ups and downs. I've had some big wins and some dry spells. Uh, the last year or so, I seem to have kind of come into my own and, and doing really well and has settled down into a routine with the product. And um, I'm branching out more. I, I quit my full-time job to do this uh, May 1st a year ago. So we're looking at one-year anniversary in a week of being unemployed and working for myself. And that has just made a ton of difference, both in the business, the time that I can devote to the customers, the exposure I can get by attending cook-offs, uh, meeting my, both my customers and my competitors. Are you uh, looking to, I know, uh, you know, probably initially there was a lot of online stuff. It's obviously a little bit easier to, to deal with the online stuff. But now that you have uh, digressed away from the traditional day job, if you will, into being Texas Pepper Jelly full time, uh, ha- has there been more of a, an attack uh, on a brick and mortar or like the regional stores around you? Or did that kind of come right along uh, regardless of if you had a full time job uh, and then working Texas Pepper Jelly uh, part time or, or not? Well, as far as brick and mortar, getting my stuff into some mom and pop stores, 
Uh, we've been pretty successful with that the last couple of years, uh, probably eight or nine different locations around the country. None of them super huge, but, um, you know, we fill a niche market and it's done okay. As far as me, myself, a brick and mortar store, you know, it's in the works. Uh, it's not something I've rushed. I've done this whole thing kind of my way and, and not been in a big hurry to try to, to take out a huge, massive debt and be successful overnight. I've kind of done a pay as I go way and, uh, it's, it's paid off dividends. I, I don't have, um, uh, a huge amount of debt or anything like that. So, uh, absolutely. I want to have a store, but it may be later this summer or even early next year before I settle down and do it. The internet's just been too good to me. It's, it's too convenient. It's too easy. Um, it's 24 seven. The overhead is not like a brick and mortar store. Yep. And uh, I still get the advantage of going to the cook off on weekends and and dealing with my customers face to face. Craig Sherry joining me here on the show, uh, creator of the Texas Pepper Jelly products the website. By the way, if you want to check it out while we're talking, TexasPepperJelly.com, just the way it sounds. Uh, Craig, you mentioned that uh, you've been in a little bit more of a rhythm on the competition side of things. Uh, I guess first and foremost, are you? taking part in various sanctioning bodies? Do you like to stick with a KCBS or, or an IBCA uh, more you know, dedicated to one or the other just for consistency purposes? How do you attack the competition scene? Well, you know, a lot of it's geographical. Uh, I'm way down here in Houston, Texas. Uh, I have to look at what's convenient to get to in a lot of cases. I have all the admiration in the world for the KCBS cooks and, and what they do. I enjoy doing a few KCBS events a year. However, it's just not cost effective. Uh, the closest one is generally six hours away, and I weigh the cost of doing that versus multitude of cook-offs within a couple of hours of me in most cases for a fraction of the cost, and the prize money is about the same. So I catch myself staying in the Texas area, doing a lot of IBCA, uh, Texas Gulf Coast, which uh, is a, a shoot-off of IBCA, and a few KCBS when I can work them in, uh, just because of, the, again, the geographic location. From when you started, you know, eight, nine years ago in the competition scene to, you know, advancing forward to where we're at in 2014, uh, you said you've seen some, you know, really good success. I mean, I've looked over the the competition, the thing that you have on your website, you know, especially within, you know, let's say now uh, and then a year past, you've had, you know, I don't know if it's been uh, seven or eight grand championships or something like that, but it's been a very impressive number just over the last uh, six, seven, eight months. But as you look back to what you knew then to what you know now, uh, how have you evolved, uh, I guess, both to the benefit and perhaps the detriment uh, as a competition cook? Wow, I don't know about detriment to the benefit. I think the the biggest thing that uh, I guess from my my perspective to to evolving into a better cook was to break it down um, simply. You know, it's going to sound simplistic, and I don't mean for it to, but it really is simplistic. Not worry so much about things. Uh, I found out when I when I learned to relax and and not not overthink what I was doing. Just go do, go cook, turn out the best product that you can on any given day. Success seems to follow more than when I worried about it, when I obsessed about it, when I had to buy this particular one brisket or I knew I couldn't place without it. Uh, drive all over town and 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 pilfer through. Uh, you know, 50 racks of ribs to find that perfect rack or two racks that you want to cook. Uh, that's all fine. And I'm not saying that the guys aren't successful doing it. It just wasn't for me. When I learned to take what I could get and go out and cook it, enjoy it, and, and just perfect my product and, and not worry so much, it seemed like success just followed. And I don't know if it's that way for everybody, but it's worked very well for me. Just not overthinking it. A lot of teams, a lot of pit masters talk, um, when I'm talking to them on the show, that talk about flavor profiles and 
you know, when people are talking to me off air, it's like, well, how does a team come up with a flavor profile or or perhaps even worse yet, and you see it a lot, I guess, in the KCBS where there doesn't seem to be any type of willingness to get outside of the box that has been set up as what a winning flavor, uh, flavor profile is, and, and I'm sure it differs a little bit in the IBCA, but nevertheless, you have to have something to bring to the judges' uh, taste buds. How do you go about, A, coming up with a flavor profile with a start and then refining that over something that you feel is, is a winning um is a winning recipe weekend in and weekend out? Well, you know, for me, it was simple. I, I have to like the food that I'm cooking. And I, it, it took a, a while to find something that I was both comfortable with and that the judges seemed to respond to as well. After that, uh, refining it was simply just cooking it every weekend and not varying from it. Uh, I like to think outside the box. I like to... to to do different things from time to time, but I will do that at home and introduce it slowly to a, a cook-off environment and see what kind of reception it gets. To go out there and just cook every weekend, I need to cook the same thing week in and week out. And, and I'm not even talking about tweaking or anything at, at this point in the game. Um, I'm convinced whether it's KCBS in Rhode Island or we're talking IBCA all the way down the Rio Grande Valley or anything in between, good barbecue is going to win uh, by and large more than it misses. So if you've got a good product, uh, something that is non-offensive to the taste judges, I think you're miles ahead. And and all you can do is just perfect that. And, And you don't perfect it by you know, adding an extra handful of spice or or maybe adding one more ingredient, you perfect it by keeping it consistent, in my opinion. You keep the ingredients, your rubs, your sauces, whatever you're using, you keep them absolutely consistent and you cook them to the best of your ability. And that, my friend, can take a long time for a lot of guys to grasp. They, They tend to think it's their food uh, when a lot of times I think it's the way they're cooking their food. They're not putting the, uh, the effort into the back end, which is, is uh, fire control, temperature control, uh, you know, the outdoor ambient weather, messing with them, good weather, bad weather. Uh, they've got all of that to focus on, and I think people get wrapped up too much in the recipes. Craig Sherry joining me from Texas Pepper Jelly, pit master of the uh, same team name, Texas Pepper Jelly. TexasPepperJelly.com is the website if you want to check it out here while we're talking. Uh, Craig, recently uh, you, you won a, a grand championship, which uh, automatically punched your ticket to the Jack Daniels this year. You won uh, seven within that uh, defined time window. Uh, your thoughts, I guess, A, on the, the qualifying win that put you into the Jack, and then uh, you know why for you – is uh, the Jack Daniels important to, to qualify for and uh, and have a chance at winning? Well, you know, uh, two weeks ago I hit my number seven. It started back in September. Uh, right out of the box I got my first one. And when I got my second or third qualifier, I thought, you know, this might be doable. Uh, chasing seven qualifiers I think is difficult for any cook. Yep. I think we see that, you know, look how many teams make it a year. I've never really counted them, but I'm assuming it's what somewhere around four five, six teams a year get in there on seven across the nation. Um, to wrap it up this early kind of caught me by surprise. Uh, of course, I've been going every weekend to a qualifier trying to cook and, and of course win, but to get two of them back to back, uh, within the last few weeks was really nice. So this last one, everything come together. Uh, of course, you know, in Texas, we cook three meats uh, as a requirement versus the four meats in KCBS. Uh, to get them all to come in is no different than KCBS. I mean, you, you want them all to be up there and, and, and be good, solid calls. And I've just been fortunate enough to have that. As far as my personal goal is going to the Jack, I mean, I can't speak for every cook out there, but it is kind of like the uh, Super Bowl of cook-offs. It's, I guess, our holy grail of holy grails. Uh, it carries more significance because of the difficulty 
to get in there. People ask me if it's just really that impressive of a place to go cook, and kind of is and kind of isn't. It's a hole in the ground. I mean, it's dusty, nasty, dirty. It can rain. It can be miserable. It's like any other cook-off you go to, except that it has that mystique and that history of you have to be invited. You have to win your way there, or you have to be drawn there. So that really cuts down the crowd that's able to attend. And I think on any given year, it's probably one of the best representations of the best cooks across the country. And for that reason alone, it's it's worth attending to me. Um, now i just got to practice and see if I can not embarrass myself when I get there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have anything to worry about that, uh, Craig Chair, joining me here on the show. You know, there, there's the other aspect to uh, the Jack Daniels was obviously is that uh, whole international contingent. Do you think that there is a possibility sooner than later that uh, an international team could come up and, and win the whole thing at this point? You know, on any given Saturday, I think anybody can win. Uh, I don't follow the national teams that well, and I really have never been privileged enough to taste their food. Uh, but I think it's inevitable. We're going to see them win. Uh, I think when it does, it'll surprise a few people. And and I think that when it happens, we may see them there for several years. I mean, not necessarily back to back to back, but they're definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, the knowledge that's out there now with, with the cooks that are sharing and teaching and the Internet I don't see how even an international team can avoid winning at some point. Last question, Craig, and then I'll let you go. Um, you know, I was trying to interview uh, the Pig Man. Are you familiar with the Pig Man, by the way? Actually, I'm not. Well, he's got a um, uh, show on Discovery called Boss Hog. I believe it's on Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I had this uh, lady that runs a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a quite a, a long histor- uh, history um, barbecue restaurant called uh, Wright's Barbecue down in Texas. And, okay. uh, you know, you see a lot of reality TV shows in general. Uh, for us, you know, and by us, I mean the barbecue people. Uh, you see barbecue pit masters and some of these other shows. As somebody who's in it, uh, are you a fan of the shows? Well, not in the TV shows, but in the in the culture and in the business. Uh, are you a fan of the shows? Do you think that they're uh, showing and promoting the right things? Are they taking it in a direction that maybe it doesn't need to go? Uh, what's your thought on that whole deal? Well, you know, I, I'm not familiar with all the shows. The only one I'm really familiar with is Pitmaster, and it's going to sound like I'm picking on them probably. Or I've got sour grapes, or I'm crying. You know, I, I've heard just about all of it from people. Uh, but I'm going to be honest. Pitmaster is about as far from from where it started to where it is today to dealing with with serious competition cooks and what we do. It's a joke, and that's just my honest opinion. Uh, I haven't been on the show. I haven't been asked. It's not for lack of trying. I mean, I would love to be there selfish reasons of course my business i think it would help my business it's great to get your product name in front of a million viewers or whatever they have but as far as it being realistic like what we do in competition um no i i don't i don't care for it i don't think it's good for what we do um what it is is television it's uh it's entertainment they're there's they're pulling cooks uh they're pulling cooks that maybe have no no grands or, or one grand they've been cooking for six months or a year and there's literally dozens if not more serious cooks out there that have a lot to offer that have worked our craft and and done what we do and I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the TV shows are kind of making a joke of that. And, and I don't know if I stand alone uh, or if a lot of people feel the same way I do. I'm, I'm kind of hanging it out there, and hopefully I won't get crucified for it. No, uh, everybody is entitled to their opinion, and Craig Sherry is not afraid to share his. You can find his products at texaspepperjelly.com. He is the pit master with the same team name, Texas Pepper Jelly. Craig, again, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for doing it. Continued success, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you got it. There he is. Mother.
Craig Sherry, Texas Pepper Jelly. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Somebody that's got an opinion, whether you agree with him or not, he's going to lay it out there on the line. Sour grapes? Well, I guess if you're looking to make an argument. I hear it all the time. This is It's not what competition barbecue is or uh, you know where it was to what it is now. Two different things. If you're uh, watching me on Outdoor Cooking Channel, uh, Kevin has given me a quick email that says, obviously, there's something wrong with the chat. Um, I don't control the chat. I controlled, obviously, the sound portion of the show a little bit earlier. That didn't work out too well, ladies and gentlemen. But um, it's always interesting to hear that, you know, the guys that are really passionate about it. Um, and uh, I think also to his uh, Craig's credit, to uh, said, hey, <laughs> somebody calls me to be on that show or... You know, I've submitted inter, uh, audition tapes, just haven't been picked. Selfish reasons, I'd get on that show in a second, sure. I will continue to maintain that if I was offered a spot, no thanks. Not going to do it. Not because I'm afraid I'm going to lose, because I know I would. So why bother? Test my metal. Uh, Mother's Day, folks, is coming up rapidly. You know, you've screwed up Valentine's Day. You pissed the bed on Christmas. You really blew it on Hanukkah. Stop it. Regain all of the confidence that your wife or husband, same-sex lover, has in you by visiting Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. The perfect answer. A new watch for your loved one. Maybe a uh, bowl of a watch. Why spend a ton of money on a watch when you don't have to? Bowl of a watch is stylish, affordable, starting under 200 bucks. Bowl of a watch has come in traditional court style, retro-styled automatic versions, chronograph skeletons, and traditional styles fill the bowl of a line of timepieces. Got that precisionist. I own one of those, by the way. Want the most accurate watch in the world? Who doesn't? Bowl of a watch precisionist is the watch. Exclusive movement. Breaks down the second hand and the movements of 16 segments per second, giving the second hand a smooth moving appearance. Steel titanium versions are available as well. Then you have the Accutron. I own one of those as well. I paid for it. High end without the high dollars. Starting below 600 bucks, the Accutron watch gives a high end style quality without breaking the bank. Citizen, gadget junkie, of course you are. You're a barbecue guy. Citizens is perfect for the gadget guy. Eco drive technology converts light and energy. Powering your watch perfectly and accurately. Need a timer for your barbecue cooking? Some citizens have multiple timers along with alarms and time zones. Then, of course, you have Philip and Company. Many high-end European watch assembly companies use Swiss movements called ETA. Philip assembles his watch personally using ETA movements and hand-picked components starting at $895. Philip's watches not only have elegant European style, but they're affordable. All the watches that Philip's makes are serial numbered and registered with Philip himself. So head on over to stephendefranco.com. Pick out a new watch. Call Steve at 440-943-2700. That's 440-943-2700. Tell him your barbecue brother or sister. He'll give you the real discount on that watch. Not allowed by the manufacturer to tell you the real discount. 440-943-2700. Stephen DeFranco, D-I-F-R-A-N-C-O. stephendefranco.com. We're back with Jason Ganahl right after this to talk about Sam's Club. Stick around. We'll be right back. Name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Who would have thought this music thing was going to go this far? I never asked for this. I never asked for this fast living, the women, the whiskey, craziness. There's whiskey in my soul. Let's see if we can get, get through uh, one call here without any type of shenanigans and Tom Fuleray. Of course, I didn't set that. Damn it. He's not going to be able to see me, but I'll be able to see him. All right. 
Uh, helping me close the show out tonight. The Sam's Club Series continues to roll on. My next guest took part in the Denver, Colorado local event this past weekend. Walked away with GC here to recap it for us tonight. The pit master of GQ. Jason Ganahl joining me here on the show. Jason, how are you, buddy? Good, good. Hey, Greg, I'm getting lots of feedback also. Are you really? Four out, four out of four. Really? Yep. Oh, geez. I was going to swear, but I better hold my tongue. All right, I'm going to dump you. I'll call you right back. Cool. Got to be kidding me. Looks like I got to shut the whole thing down. Shut it all down. We're going home, ladies and gentlemen. We got to go home now. Thanks for coming. All right, how about now, Jay? Man, same thing, Greg. You want me to call in? Really? Uh, yeah, call it. You have the all number? Right. All right. Crazy insane. Jason, I don't want to break the news to you, but guess what? It's going to suck when you call in. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> oh, my. 216-220-0966. I hope. I don't want to say this in a weird way, but I know why they call him uh, GQ Barbecue. That's one handsome devil. That's right. I got no picture of him either. So, sorry, ladies. Sorry, ladies. Uh, Jason is the pit master of uh, a team called GQ Barbecue. Took place, in, or took part in the last... Um, oh. That was 13 times? Wow, wow. I feel bad. That I screwed Brian like that. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, the funny thing is I told him not to uh, d uh, wear earplugs because uh, pre prevent any feedback on your end. Yeah, right. Nice show. It's very weird. Am I not, am, am not going to be uh, getting in phone calls now either? Is that what it's going to be? Is this how it's going to be? Hold on a damn minute. Yeah, by the way, I did want to mention this. Perhaps uh, people misconstrued. Uh, Kevin doesn't have anything to do with the chat uh, himself. That He pays for that service. So he's getting hose-balled uh, just like, well, evidently Jason's going to get hose-balled too here, and I didn't even know. I'm going to call him. Jason. I'm on. Is that better? No, no. Yeah. Um, what yeah. do you, what's your number? I can call in. See that just pop up? Yep. Just dial that number. Oh, uh, crap. Where did it pop up at? <sighs> Should be on your chat. I don't have chat. Oh, all right. Uh, you have a phone? Email, I emailed you. If you can email me your number, I'll call in. Do you have, do you have your phone right there? Yep. Punch in these digits. Okay. 216. Yep. 220. Two two zero zero nine six six zero nine six six. Yep. Perfect. All right. Calling you. In. Don't centralize. Don't be douchey, and jump in on Jason's time. <laughs> oh, I know the three zero three. That is a Colorado number. Jason, you there? I am on. All right. Uh, static or uh, feedback too or no? Nope. All right. We're good. All right. Great. Uh, I was just saying that all the ladies are going to be terribly disappointed because, uh, you know, I mean this in only a most respectful way. I mean, you're kind of a handsome guy. So, you know, rarely okay. do we have, uh, you know, the, the guys that are breaking the looks meter on uh, on barbecue. But I guess we know where the team GQ came from, right? Oh, is that all two of your audience, all two ladies out there listening right now? Yeah. Uh, Danielle Domofsky and Sylvie Curry and Diane Meat, all three of them. They're out there awesome. and they're ready. Awesome. All right. Well, so let me disappointed to know that I am, I am happily married to my wife Heidi, and she's listening too. So that makes that uh, four ladies that's listening right now. Hey, that's great. Four four more than uh, I usually get. So I appreciate the extra uh, lump in there with your wife. All right, Jason. So uh, how do you get into this uh, whole competition thing? Well, first I wanna I wanna just thank you for having me on. Um, I, I yeah. listen, I've been listening to you now for probably about uh, two years. And I usually during a comp week I trim chicken Tuesday night, 
I usually have you on in the background while I'm trimming chicken. Oh, cool. And to have uh, the lineup that you did tonight where you had reality TV shows, kind you of. had a multi-time uh, Memphis in May winner, successful restaurateur, successful barbecue cook, and then some little old dude out in Colorado, some airtime. Uh, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on and share the uh, waves with those other people. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. So how did I get started? Uh, I started out as a judge, actually. I, uh, I I love barbecue. I'm originally from St. Louis, and then I grew up eating barbecue my entire life. And uh, I started out as a judge out here. I, I Probably about five years or so ago, I, I stumbled upon KCBS. And I actually used to be a chili judge, and I did uh, chili cook-offs judging that back when I lived in St. Louis. And I thought, oh, that'd be cool. I'll get into uh, judging. And I went and judged some uh, some contests, some KCBS contests, and I just kind of thought, oh, it's good. And then... Uh, it's it's good. It's good. I think I can kind of compete with these guys, and the competitive spirit started flowing in me. And one thing led to another. I just started practicing and got into a contest. And the first contest I cooked was Pueblo, Colorado, probably uh, I think it was three years ago. And I got a call, and then that's all it takes is that first call, and then you're uh, then you're hooked after that. Uh, how many people are on the team GQ? Um, it, it, it's a family team. So uh, I have uh, my wife, myself. Uh, I have a daughter, Tori, who's actually in college out in Oregon right now. I've got a four-year-old, Holly, and I've got a set of twins that turn two uh, next week. And that's that's the team. I have a good friend, Kenny, Kenny Crochet, whose uh, wife and my wife went to high school together. And Kenny comes out and helps me as much as he can. He he gets to a lot of the big contests and uh, generally gets to a lot of the, the contests that are pretty close here to us here in Denver. Jason, did you say you have a kid in college and then you have – twin four-year-olds or two-year-olds that's correct oh my god the you had the the tunnel light had closed on the other end wow look at you congratulations i think thank you thank you very much i appreciate <laughs> that <laughs> um you know i love team names of course and you're you're a fan of the show so obviously you hear me ask a lot of teams how they come up with their names how does uh, how does gq come up for you just a, a simple play on words of the magazine or something a little bit more deep yeah, well, uh, Ganal is my last name, so really it's just GQ, and I was just looking for something very simple. So uh, GQ is uh, Ganal Q, and then, yeah, it's kind of the play on the magazine. But I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that, and like your first rule, like you mentioned earlier, I won't name names, but it was a rep with, uh, in KCBS, and it was one of the, uh, the, I don't know, second or third contests that I did. Uh, you know how they go around, they, they check you in, they check the meat, and they give you your boxes and all that. He was... Just like, you know, QL has got a funny name. It's very hard when you see it to to say it properly, right? Yep, yep. It's E-Q-U-E, so they don't really know how to pronunciate it when they read it on a piece of paper. But then once they say it, then they recognize it. So he's he's looking at it, and he's kind of squinting, and he kind of looks at me, and I can tell he doesn't want to say anything that will offend me or anything like that. <laughs> and uh, he looks at it, and he goes, quirky? Uh, quirky? Is that how you say it? And I was like, no, it's, uh, it's GQ, like the magazine. He goes, oh, I... I don't read any magazines like that. I just read Field and Strain. So it was kind of a, <laughs> kind of a learning experience a little bit, but uh, it, it seems to catch on a little bit with a lot of different people. But it's just, uh, it's just a playoff of my last name, Ganol, and then, uh, and then Q. All right, uh, Jason, let's go ahead and take a look back at the weekend itself uh, this past weekend. Uh, overall, anything come up during the cook that you had to contend with uh, that perhaps you didn't uh, plan for that you weren't expecting? Yeah, it was uh, it was weird. Uh, I cooked on an FE, and uh, you know it's a, it's basically a computer, right? That spits out these little little pellets, and it just started making this noise at like twelve thirty, one o'clock that I never heard before. It just kind of started clicking. I really wasn't sure what was going on, and I am by no means a techie computer guy. I don't know how that thing works on the inside. I probably should take you know a couple hours and figure it out in case anything goes wrong. But it started clicking, and I was just listening to it, and I could tell the pellets weren't dropping in. I had no idea what was going on. So I just kind of stuck my finger uh, up the fire pot where the hole was, and I could feel that there was just a, a wedge of pellets right there. And I kind of poked around a little bit, and I, I think I loosened a couple up, and then I, I grabbed a knife, actually, and kind of jostled it around up there a little bit more. And uh, I think I, I, I opened up whatever it was that was clogging that up, and the pellets kind of started hitting. But I let that run like that for probably a good five to seven minutes as I, I tried to figure out what I was going to do. And it was, you know, it was one o'clock, maybe 1245 in the morning. So it wasn't like I can go around, knock on doors and I didn't want to wake anybody up who was probably a little more familiar with the guts of an FE than I was. 
So fortunately, that's all it was, was a clog that was in there, and uh, it, it went right back to, to humming along like it usually does. But that was one thing that kind of startled me a little bit. But other than that, I think uh, it was just a typical first first year cook where it's, it's bumpy, but it wasn't anything. Haven't done probably now about, uh, I don't know how many contests I've done, 25 or so. I've seen a lot of different things, and I kind of know what to do when, when certain things come up. But it was definitely a bumpy cook, but it wasn't anything I couldn't uh, overcome. You know, when you look at the overall results, individually for meats, uh, eighth place and chicken, sixth place in ribs, you win pork, uh, and then you just missed uh, winning brisket as well. You take second there. You know, as far as scores go in the overall sense, man, it was nine-point spread between you and RGC. That's a pretty convincing win on any given contest weekend, especially at a Sam's Club event, given the talent that usually shows up. Uh, is it fair to say, Jason, you were pretty satisfied with how this wa- last weekend was scored? I was. I was, but you never know. I mean, there's some weekends where I turn in food that I like, and you know, you're know, you disappointed with the outcome, and there's some weekends where you turn in food that you don't like, and you're pleasantly surprised with the outcome. So I never really try to get too excited. All I want to do is not shoot myself in the foot and turn in something bad. So I liked everything I turned in. I thought my pork was outstanding, and I'm just very glad that the judges agreed. Are you a guy or are you a team that is uh, one that will taste chicken and make adjustments last second, or do you just cook it, turn it in, and you don't even bother tasting it until after the fact when you can't do anything about it? Yeah, this is how neurotic I am about that. I'm very much the first person you just described. I'm constantly tasting and, and making adjustments. I'm even doing it midway through the cook. So I have certain kind of benchmarks during the cook where I like certain things to taste. And I, I'm adjusting kind of along the way. Uh, you know, like before I foil, I'll rip a little piece off, just kind of see how it looks, how it tastes, and make adjustments there. And so what I like to do is I actually like to have as many people as possible kind of taste the food right before it goes in the box to get their opinion because that, that's that's the judges. I mean, just because I'm a cook doesn't make me any more of an expert than, than the other people I have in my, my trailer as I, as I box. So, for instance, this weekend I wasn't fortunate enough to have Kenny with me, and Kenny's really good now about kind of tasting, and he, he's kind of learned the competition flavor profile, if you will, of what we're kind of trying to shoot for. And I had this guy I work out with actually with me, and he was just he came out to, to hang out, and he, and he did some uh, some filming. And uh, I was like, we were putting bu- the brisket together and the burn-ins and um, the slices, and I was like, what do you think? I go, do you like uh, bite one or bite two? And he was convincing. He without hesitation, he goes bite two, and and that's what I like in my tasters. The people who have to think about it, I know it's it's not enough, but I like it when they know right away what they like better. And that, that helped me a lot because I, I wasn't really sure and I didn't really kind of know. And I, I actually, believe it or not, I have like three or four different flavor profiles right before it goes in the box. And I'll just make adjustments on the fly depending on how it tastes at that moment. Wow. Jason Ganahl joining me here on the show, Pitmaster of GQ, recapping the win at the Denver, Colorado Sam's Club local qualifying event. Uh, I guess lucky enough for you, maybe not un, uh, unlucky enough for you, you uh, turn right around and head out to Las Vegas this coming weekend for the regional final, the first one of the year. Um, you ready to, to go for back-to-back wins, or are you just kind of looking to hit top ten and move on to Bentonville? Well, we went down there last year. We were lucky enough to get to Bentonville last year, and I took reserve in the local, and I took reserve in the regional. So, I, I mean, I don't go to a contest, Greg, to just get top ten. I go to a contest to win. So I'm looking forward to win, but this is one of those few contests where you can actually finish, what, fourth, fifth, sixth, and still feel good about it. So I'll feel good if I get tenth, but I'm I'm going there to win, and it's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of really good teams there, but I'm going to do my best and hopefully not hurt myself and turn in the best possible food I can and then cross my fingers and hope the judges agree. All right, so let's nitpick just for a second if we could. Obviously, the the pork and the brisket adjustments will probably be uh, nothing at all, but you look at uh, chicken and ribs. Will you make any type of a flavor profile adjustment from where you were at this past weekend uh, rolling into Sin City this coming weekend? Uh, one, one of the things I do is I write down, I take the score sheet that I get, and I write down, I, I, I draw four lines, and I put chicken, I put ribs, I put pork, and I put brisket. And I write down exactly what I cooked with that week because I, 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 I constantly am changing my, my, my flavors, my rubs, my sauces, my tweaks, my foil wraps and all that. So I'll go back actually to what I cooked last, last year in, um, in Vegas. I took first in ribs, first in uh, ch- uh, chicken, and we bombed pork. We ended up getting like 23rd or 24th in pork, and then I took I think like 11th or 12th in brisket. 
And I know what I did with pork. I made a wrong adjustment right at the very end, and uh, I, and I, I regret it. And it just I couldn't recapture it back in those final five to seven minutes before the box had to go. So I'm going to cook the same thing I cooked last year in Vegas because I assume a lot of those judges are the same judges that are going to be there this year. And they love my ribs. They love my chicken, and they thought my brisket was okay, and I'm not going to mess the pork up this time. So I just hope that that hits again like it hit last year, and, and I'll be okay. How many contests during the course of a calendar year will uh, GQ look to do? Uh, it's tough out here in Colorado. Uh, we got the Rocky Mountain Barbecue Association, and we're, we're growing like wildfire out here, but it, it's still really spread out. I mean, you got to go up to Montana. you got to go into Wyoming. Uh, you got to go down to New Mexico. you got to go to Nebraska and Kansas. So it's very difficult. And I, I, I try to stick to a lot of contests that are six hours or lower in drive time. So I generally do probably uh, – this year I'm going to try to hit 12. I did about 12 last year, Rocky Mountain events, and we, we had a really good run. We got uh, either grand or reserve or third in over half the contests we cooked. So I'm going to try to do the same thing again this year. I would love to do more, but it's just not feasible out here where we live unless it's literally – a full-time job where we can take off, you know, on Thursday mornings and, and come back, you know, Sunday afternoons um, to, you know, to drive to cook those early contests in the year that are in Oklahoma, that are in, you know, parts of uh, Kansas, Missouri, even down in Arizona, Southern California, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going we're to target pr- probably about, uh, about 12 contests, and we already qualified for the Royal. I uh, hope to get a, get a ticket punch for Benville, and, of course, hope to get a draw to Jack, and that would be the icing on the cake to do those three bonus contests, too, at the end of the year. Uh, Jason, before I let you go tonight, um, you know, obviously there's probably a lot of teams that are listening to the show, uh, well, probably in podcast, uh, that are like, well, you know, we got this team together. We're thinking about getting this team together. As someone who hasn't been in it for like 15 or 20 years, but kind of relatively new to the scene, you're not doing 40 or 50 competitions like some of these teams chasing KCBS Team of the Year that are heavily sponsored that are able to do this. What's your best advice, two, three bits of advice for somebody looking to get into the competition scene? Sure. Uh, a couple of different things. I, I think the, the first thing to do is just take a class, just uh, find somebody that uh, you look up to and uh, you think you can learn from. Somebody who's a good teacher, just because they're a really good cook doesn't mean they're a good teacher. Um, kind of watch or learn or just try to figure out if they're a good teacher and they can kind of explain what they're doing. Uh, take, a, take a class. Uh, I would also recommend just reading and, and practicing. There's no substitution for practicing. And I, I must have done, I mean, just countless cooks like over the years. And, and the third thing I would say is just always just adapt, like never getting a run. I know this is a, something you can sit around and talk about and stuff, but I, I, and there's some guys that will have the same recipe for five or six years. And there's some guys that are constantly mutating the recipes. And I think uh, if, if it's not working for you, mutate it and uh, come up with something else and, and try to find something that'll work. And those are really the three things. Taking a class can really reduce the learning curve uh, pretty quickly, and then after that, you've got to find your own wrinkle to make it unique because you don't want to be cooking the same thing 20 other people are cooking out there on any competition weekend. Jason Ganahl just won the Denver-Colorado Sam's Club local event, now heads to Las Vegas this coming weekend to uh, try and qualify for the finals out in Bentonville, Arkansas. Jason, great to have you on the show tonight, man. Good luck this weekend and continued success. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. Do a good job on the I love your show. Thank you. There he is, Jason Goodall. He loves my show. I love him for coming on and bringing the energy. Yeah, yay! I don't think that'll be the last time we hear from him. I just love guests that are excited, talking with passion. He brought it. First time to the show, sounded like a vet. All right, maybe you hate to stand near the hot grill waiting for food. All right. I mean, I don't. But if you do, let iGrill take care of it. The iGrill 2, the iGrill Mini Bluetooth grilling thermometer. Work with your iOS device to let you know when your food is perfectly cooked from up to 150 feet away. They magnetically mount to your grill or smoker and come packed with some pretty awesome features like graphic, min and max temperature settings, custom alarms. The powerful yet compact single probe iGrill Mini comes complete with proximity wake-up and LED temperature indicator. It goes through a range of colors based on doneness. Red lets you know your food is done, while green, yellow, and orange show its progress. Get your own. Get your own iGrill Mini for $39.99, iDevicesInc.com. Or you can possibly find it at select low stores if your low store has been selected to inventory the iGrill Mini. 
Or you can look at the iGrill 2. It's bigger, it's badder, it's fully illuminated display and four probes for maximum temperature tracking. Shipping in just a few short weeks in May, you can pre-order right now your iGrill 2 for $99.99. Just shy of $100 today and get free shipping on your order for $50 or more. Quick math would tell you the iGrill 2 qualifies for free shipping. You can get that at iDevicesInc.com as well. You can also follow iGrill on Facebook for exclusive offers and barbecue updates. Just to refresh, get your own iGrill Mini for $39.99 at iDevicesInc.com or select low stores or the iGrill 2 pre-order right now. They'll start shipping in May. $99.99, iDevicesInc.com. And again, no matter what you're getting at iDevicesInc.com, if you buy more than 50 bucks. The iGrill regular, the standard iGrill also qualify. Um, uh, is that right? Forty, Yeah, let's go for $79. Ships for free. Anything over 50 bucks, ships for free. All right, we're back to quickly wrap right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampy. All right, we are back. Very quickly, we're going to be making an exit. How quickly? This quickly. All the way back in the first hour, we talked with Quita Wright. Uh, did not get Brian Quaka. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, you can watch Boss Hog on the Discovery uh, Channel. Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make your time zone adjustments. Then we also talk with Melissa Cookton, Smoking in the Boys Room. You can find her book at uh, memphisbarbecueco.com for your autograph copy, or you can find it in any major online or brick-and-mortar retailer. Also, uh, look for her at Memphis in May coming up. Good luck to her. And then in the second hour, it was Craig Sherry from Texas Pepper Jelly, texaspepperjelly.com, talking about his products and a lot of great advice and uh, recounting of his competition experience. And then we wrapped it up with Jason Ganahl from GQ, Good luck to him and the team as they head out to Las Vegas this coming weekend to try and uh, repeat and move on to the finals of Sam's Club in Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh, September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. Till next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now. <laughs>